What is going on everybody? It's Chris at Lime Punch Forge. Today we're going to take some of this stuff, silver, and make one of these belt buckle rings. And this is very important to my family for a short story. When my grandmother and my grandfather, Bill and Winnie, got married, it was after World War II, and he could only afford at the time a ring for my grandmother. So he bought that ring and then he made himself a ring. And at the time I think it was like some scrap stainless steel or something like that and it was a belt buckle. So growing up, I always remember my grandfather wearing that belt buckle ring and that was very iconic. When he passed away, my brother got his ring and then for that Christmas my brother made them for the family. So that's what this one is here. And believe it or not, this was before I had silversmithing skills. So this was really cool to me. And now what I'm gonna do is film it, how it's made on camera, on YouTube for you guys. If you haven't already, there's a red subscribe button in there and a bell. Leave a comment, leave a like, leave a dislike. I don't really care, not to boss you. So what I'm gonna do right now is get down here, talk about mathematical order of operations and uh, film some uh, YouTube jewelry fun. All right, for those of you who are math inclined, this may be a, just a refresher for you. For those who don't know, mathematical equations have an order of operations. So uh, I'm gonna post the order of operations here, but you wanna make sure that you're not doing in a complete line of mathematical operations if you're doing different things. Like if you're adding and then subtracting and then dividing and multiplying and then all that, you can do it wrong. You can make a size 15 ring an accidental size six. Uh, ask me how I know. So what we're going to do to find out the length of the metal that we need is we're going to take the ID, the internal dimension of the ring, in my case, it's a right around, I'm gonna call it 24 millimeters. So 24 millimeters, that's two M's, trust me, I'll add an extra hump, there we go. And then the thickness time, or plus the thickness of your metal. And in my case, it's gonna be 14 gauge, which is about 1.58, 1.58. This is going to be times by pi. But if you do all of this in one operation, you're going to get a different number. What you want to do is realize that this is a parenthesis around it. So you're going to want to have this done first, which equals 25.58. 25.58. And then you're going to take this number and then times that number by pi, which in my case is 80.36. So 80.36. That gives me the length of metal I need to make a ring band that is size 15. Now for this band, since we're gonna have some wrap around, because the band is going to look like this, it's gonna have a hole we're gonna want this band to wrap around and come back through the center hole and then have some tail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 30 millimeters to this number. So that is 110.36 and we're just gonna go call it 110. So my piece of metal needs to be 110 millimeters. Now depending on what size you want your band, you want your metal to be as wide as you want your buckle because your band is going to be thinner than your buckle because it's going to go through. Now for me, so the ring my brother made, the buckle is, let's see if I can get it on camera, about 8.63. The band is about 474 and then each one of 
Vans has about 1.6 ish 1.8 on either side so I'm going to be using this stuff which is uh, 12 gauge maybe yeah so this is 12 gauge um, it's about six millimeters wide so what I'm gonna do is I'd like to take a chasing hammer and spread this out a little bit and then take the rest of it through a rolling mill to thin it down to 14 gauge because that's what I like to do is this is 12 I like it as a 14 gauge ring um, so I'm gonna take it over to the anvil I'm gonna spread this out so that when I roll it through the rolling mill this portion this tip is wider than here and I'm going to probably hammer only about this much and I'm gonna use a chasing hammer because it has a nice round end and when I strike, it's going to spread it out in a circular fashion, which is what I want. I want to create a larger chunk of metal at this end so that when I saw this portion, I have wider here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll bring you guys along. All right, so I'm going to hang the portion that I want to hammer on the anvil, and the rest of it I'm going to have off the anvil. I don't want to accidentally strike that. So I'm going to strike it a couple times and then I'm going to take my gauge to make sure that that piece that I'm hammering is actually 14 gauge like I want it. So 14, a little bit more, 14, I'm about there. 14 and we're about 14 there so I have a little bit here and I wanted to spread out 12 14 so the buckle is at 14 right now. Parts of this are at 16, but that's okay. It's wider now. And then I'm going to cut this to about 100 centimeters because as I roll this all down to uh, 14 gauge, it's going to lengthen it. And I imagine it'll probably lengthen about 10 centimeters. All right, I'm at the rolling mill and I'm going to insert my wire, open up my rollers, and I'm going to place it in the mill. So it's not, it's tight. It's not pushing down on it, but it's snug. I'm gonna make sure my rollers are at zero. You can dial those, dial these guys to zero. Uh, Randy at GoMail Creations has some new ones that he 3D printed. Uh, I haven't tried him yet, but uh, hey, more accurate can be the better. So I'll open this up, pull my wire out, bring them back to zero, and I'm going to do a dead pass, which basically means that there's no real pressure on it. Then I'm going to take my top here, see if I can zoom out a little bit, or tip you guys up. I'm going to take my uh, little knob here. I'm going to do just a bit of a turn. And I'm going to insert the wire and roll it. This will be slight pressure. Not a lot. And then I'm going to check it with my gauge. So I'm at 12, almost at 14. Another quarter turn. Right now I'm at, okay, that's at 14. And here on the end, I'm not at 14 yet, but I want to kind of flatten that out a little bit. So I'm going to insert that portion into the mill. I'm going to do a dead pass just a little bit. And I'm going to tighten it down. 
dead pass. So I'm slowly feathering that out and flattening out my my work. So now I have a an end that is slightly wider and my band that is 14 gauge. And my buckle is going to be a little bit uh, thinner than 14 because right now it's at 16 gauge. So 16 gauge buckle, it's going to be about an 18 gauge ring. Or uh, excuse me, 14 gauge. Yeah. It's actually a little bit less. It's a little closer to 16. but So that gives me a wide area to work with and I can now start forming my buckle. So we're going to go back over to the anvil. I'm going to flatten this off a little bit and then we're going to straighten this out. And I'm going to do that uh, probably uh, by kneeling this first and then I'm going to create a nice flat section for um, working with the ring. Alright, we're going to give you guys a Chris eyed view. This is what I'm looking for in the anvil. See that light going through? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wider portion I'm going to hang it off the anvil so I'm not I'm not playing with it and then I'm going to take a flat hammer and just flatten that on my anvil. What I'm looking for is no light or very little light coming from the bottom of the metal. So now what I'm going to do is cut it to 110 all right so I'll cut it there if you don't have a bench skin like this piece of leather or something uh, do it because I this bottom is completely full of silver dust and shavings and yeah that that wouldn't necessarily be money that you'd be throwing away if you didn't collect it okay even that out now for the buckle or for the uh, band I'd like to let's see what that looks like this is let me grab calipers again a lot of measuring in this if you don't like math I don't either. Uh, it's 0.62. So I'm going to extend this out just a little bit. About 0.8. So I'm going to make a scribe line of 0.8 on either side of this band. See what you think of it. If you want it wider, go ahead and go wider. But you have to think about the thickness of the buckle once you get to that point. And what I'm going to do is take a square and I'm going to mark my cross line where I want the buckle to start. So that's what it's going to end up looking like. I have some lines there for sawing and a cross line here for making my end cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my saw. Grab, where's my saw lube? So have some here, but I want my beeswax. I want my beeswax. I'm going to go ahead and start sawing. And then 
and finish this up. Tiny bites, and there you go. So I got a little bit of line still showing. What I can do is I can take my saw and use it like a file. That other side cut out more beeswax. probably maybe a week since I started this project life happened stuff got busy and well here we are so not sure where I left off I did thin sand and file these uh, the sides of the band down so they're nice and clean one of the tips I can give is that at the point in time you have the metal flat and anytime you do any kind of tooling on it Take the time to finish it while it's at that state because it's going to make it later on when you're trying to finish it up, it's going to make it a lot easier because a lot of your finish work is already done. So I'm just going to take some, take some time, do some sanding, and take off some of the tool marks before I go any farther. The camera rocks. It's probably because my little puppy here bumped into it. So please forgive Luna. For now, I'm pretty happy with where it's at. I'm going to have to go back and do some more sanding and, and all that fun stuff. But for now, we're going to get the buckle part of this uh, organized and laid out and cut. So we'll go ahead and do that. And in order to do that, I'm gonna need a some sort of straight edge, or actually let's use micrometer, or a caliper, excuse me. Okay. And so width of the band all the way down is between three to six, three point two six millimeters and three two five now that i know that the width i need especially down here because that's where we're tapering it around so i'm going to be rounding this area off let's go ahead and do that now with a file make sure you guys see here i'm out so i'm just bracing it on my pin form it more later on but right now what I'm looking to do is thin it down so that when it comes through the uh, the belt buckle that I cut I know about what the thickness is and let's measure now so right at that point it's three two nine three two four three two three so right around three two four so I have my calipers adjusted and what I'm going to do is take and use my divider and I'm going to use the divider that I've already measured so I have right here dividers are set at 194 and 194 
is the distance that I need in order to make the three two three point two millimeters right in the center so what I'm gonna do is just scribe a nice line scribe another line and that gives me the width of where I need to go now I want probably the same width here on the bottom so I'm just going to make a line here can make that a little bit more uniform using my square and that's where we're at right here so I'm just gonna run it across making some layout lines and then I'm going to oh let's see make another layout line so that I have a rough estimate of where I want my hole to be. So my hole is going to go here. I have this material to work with in shaping a buckle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, after I cut my hole, make sure this fits and whatnot. So I'm going to grab a, let's see, I'm going to grab the hard part of my bench anvil here. A striking hammer and I'm just going to make a punch mark in the center of that so I have a place for my drill to sit and then drill that out so I can pierce it all right let's drill that out which is going to be one of these guys probably the second one here If you put them away each time, they'll be exactly where you thought they were. A little burr lube. Uh, pardon me. Must have been the Christmas cookies. Oop, see how that walked? I don't want that. I want to try and put it straight in the hole that I drilled. Go straight through. And then that's going to allow for my saw blade to go through there and pierce that out. And I'm using the side of my saw blade to file as well. So I'm rounding the corner to try and file out an area afterwards. Let's go ahead and make some room here. Cut that out. Move this around. And I'll go ahead and figure out how to best approach this one. So instead of turning the saw blade without sawing. Saw in the same place and then start rotating the saw blade. It's going to file out that material and allow you to turn the corner. I get my finger out of the way because I can see myself cutting that. Right now it's safe because it's on the wood block here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove material from this side, move my finger out of the way, be aware of where your fingers are. Let's try and saw and file as close to the edge as I can. So, like I said before, the teeth of my saw blade turned at an angle and moved across, act like a file. And what I want to do now is take this big chunk out. Right this way, maybe. 
try and keep my saw frame in the same place and move my work. Take it off my saw. And when I store your saw frames, I take the tension off the saw blade like this, the top one, and then I can put it back, retension it when I need to. Um, I'll keep it tensioned while I'm working, but if I'm done for the day, then I'll, uh, I'll untension it and uh, stick it back up on the rack. All right, so I have a semi-uniform thing going on there. I've got a square file that I'm gonna go ahead and kind of uniform my edges up a little. So I'm going to leave that alone as far as hogging it out. What I'm going to do now is figure out what I want to do with the buckle design. So let me grab a marker and we'll go ahead and figure out what we want to do. I think I'm just going to take the saw and start playing with it. We're just going to do this. We're going to go live.
Okay, one important thing I didn't mention before, uh, one before you start forming it, make sure you hit your uh, your maker's mark and your uh, 925 or your metal stuff on there too because it's easier to do it when this stuff is flat and a lot harder to do when it's round. Now, I had something arrive the other day in the mail and I didn't intend to use this mandrel for this ring, but I think it's kind of a cool idea to do. So this is the Pepe Tools Rosy Revolver ring mandrel. As you can see, it's got a kind of a, a little bit less than a D shape. There we go. So there's the shape of the mandrel. We're gonna go ahead and basically form the ring around this to make the buckle a flat top. So before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and size it on a regular ring mandrel. And even before that, I'm gonna go ahead and start this off by bending it into the slot that we created. And if you did it right, it should fit nice and tight. Yeah. Oh yeah. So nice and tight in there. I'm gonna slide that in. And before I do any kind of forming, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that down in there as much as I possibly can. And I'll form it first on the round. What did I say? I wanted to make a size 13, size 14. I'm gonna take my rawhide mallet, help it out a little bit. Okay, and so right now I'm at a size 14 and a quarter about. So I'm going to compress it in a little bit more and then I can form it down to about where I want. Put this guy away. Oh, my mandrel's in right. And then I'm going to take the rosy, and I have it as a, at a 14 right now, so it registers at a 14 here. But when I compress this down onto the flat section, it's going to take some of the uh, circumference out of it, which shouldn't make any much problem because fingers aren't 100% round anyway. Okay, I'm back there. And basically I have a, that's the finger I wanted it on. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna cut this end a little bit off because here's the original and let's align the buckles and I've got a little bit of a tail here that I may take off um, maybe take off I haven't decided yet I want to see what it looks like how I like it right now so far so good um, I put it on I'm gonna take about six mil off so I'll just mark that there and then what I can do is just bend that up while it's still in place I'll grab my flush cutters I'll lop it at that line and then I'll reform it using the pliers I'm gonna taper it down too because I want to try and get that to blend in with the band. I don't want it super blocky where that kind of tail, belt tail comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and anneal it now and we'll go ahead and form it a little bit more on the mandrel. 
still not quite flat. I'm going to whack it. And just so you know, on this mandrel, it registers a 14. But on the round mandrel, it registers slightly smaller because I've now squished this side down. So it registers a, oh, about a 12.75, 13 here. Whereas on the rosy, it registers a size 14. Now, just because it registers as a different size doesn't mean that the material is still not there and it still doesn't fit um, because your finger is not completely round and the material for making the ring is still there. It's just displaced a little bit wider and it doesn't go all the way down on that ring mandrel. So the size may not say the exact size. When you size these things, size it first on a round and then size it on uh, to form it using the uh, rosy revolver one. If you're making a closed ring like this, if you have an open ring where the shank of the ring is a U, it's not that big a not that not that uh, big of a deal. Um, especially if you have a, like an open top where this section is open and you have a bezel on either side of that ring shank, then it's sort of adjustable so you can kind of do whatever you want. All right, so. That will, I'll put solder here, have that flow underneath and hold that in place. And then I will put solder underneath to hold that in place, uh, the buckle in place. Before I do that, I'm going to need to make two more pieces. Uh, one, I'm going to need to make the little kind of um, little latch tonguey thing here that goes on the belt buckle. And I'll need to make a uh, kind of a retainer buckle here where the leather loop goes through it and then this piece holds it in place. And in order to do that I'm going to use some of the scrap that we made while we were making the initial ring. So these are off cuts from the forming of the width here. So I'm just going to go through, I'm going to file a couple of these flat and then I have my choice of stuff that I can work with. And then this end here will work perfectly for the little tongue end. And before I cut it too much, I am going to shape it. It's easier to shape a longer piece than it is a smaller piece. I'm just going to round it off. Now, what I'm going to do is do some measuring. Where'd my ring go? Probably fell down here. No, nope, it's right in front of me. So, to measure the next portion, I want to know what, make sure I'm zeroed. So, 3.30, half of that's 165. So I'll adjust this to 165. Close enough, and that gives me center line. I'll do it on both sides just to make sure I'm off. Then I have exactly center. I scribe both sides. I'm not scribing hard, I'm just scribing for layout. And I'll do the same thing on either side because I'm gonna wanna do a little bit of drilling here. Okay, so that gives me about half. Now what I'm gonna wanna do is figure out how many holes I wanna make and I, how far apart I want them. So I wanna make here, I have them about five millimeters apart. Here and here. So now I have a couple places that I need to mark and I'm going to mark them on the mandrel. Get my ring. And with this one, I'm going to drill at that angle there and I'm going to let the drill bit kind of ride 
over onto the buckle where that tongue is going to sit. So I'll start it at an angle. And then rotate it down. Now, that one's going to be wider because it's going to have that piece soldered in. The other ones can be smaller, just so that I don't take a bunch of space out of that buckle. It's going to look funny if I have huge holes here. So I'm going to go down maybe half the size in drill bit next. And we'll go ahead and add a little bit of lube on that. What I'm going to do now is do a little bit of sizing here. I've got my tongue that's going to go right there and I'm just going to probably lop it off what looks right. I'll make it a little bit longer than it needs to be and then I can fit it once I get there. <laughs> All right, That's a little bit, nope, too long. That's good. Okay, so wrong ring. And this is a little bit too wide, so I'll grab a ring clamp so I can hold the piece, and then I'll just use a file to rough in. Pepe ring clamp, everybody. I've been waiting for so long, yeah, to be with you a long girl, yeah, yeah. Move your back against the wall, girl. Don't be afraid, won't let you fall. I'll up a little bit more off that. Ah, uh, the joys of tiny pieces. It can actually go smaller. And I'm going to use a ring clamp again to hold that piece so I can taper the bottom in. There we go. All right, so that's where that will fit. What I'll probably have to do is solder. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, see if I can do it now. Grab a pair of pliers. All right, so I have that tongue and half rounds are uh, 
kind of these round jump ring pliers. I have it in there and then I'm going to give it a little push around that mandrel a little bit with my uh, parallels and that's going to give it a little bit of a curve. Hopefully that curve will help eliminate some of the forming later on. Looks like it did. So now that fits nice and flat. We'll solder that in place. So we'll save him over there. The next thing we're going to want to do is make our sideband. Take our small square, like one of these bezel uh, mandrels. I'm going to take a look at my ring. I'll find out about the width I want. Right about there. So I'll be forming on the tip portion here. And I'm going to select my metal. I'm going to start off forming it smaller than I need to. And then I'm going to cut off some of the excess. Because it's not going to wrap around. It's just going to go on top of the band soldered in place. So now I have that guy. Zoom. There we go. And I have kind of a, a U shape. That U shape is going to be rounded on the corners because when metal like this forms around a mandrel, it pops up in the center and causes it to kind of bow. Now you can hammer it back in place, but you're still going to have some rounding occur. Let me find where my rawhide go. So in order to combat that, that one that'll work so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my parallel jaws and I'm just gonna cinch down the sides a little bit I'm gonna leave these long so that later on I can lop those off after I get everything soldered up I'm not gonna worry too much about that at the moment What I am going to do though is probably anneal one more time so that I can bring that back down to a nice solder spacing. And then uh, we'll go ahead and solder all this up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is first solder uh, operation. I'm going to use I'm going to use hard solder for this whole thing. So I'm going to cut off some hard solder wire here. I've got four of them. I'm going to add one more. And I should just need about that much for this solder operation. So first thing I'm going to do is grab some tweezers so that I can... Alright, we're going to add a little bit of liquid flux. Just enough to kind of flood that area a little bit. And then I'm going to heat that up before I add my solder. For it to dry out a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little chunk of solder. I like this little guy. Alright, if I can grab him, maybe. Alright, so now I'll heat up the entire ring. Nice and slow. Nice and nice and even, I should say. You don't necessarily want to go slow because the slower you go, the more oxides build up. So you want to be nice and even with your heat, but not take a ton of time soldering. And I'm going to have most of the heat underneath the ring because that's where I want the solder to flow. Solder will follow the heat. Okay, next piece of solder. 
is going to go right next to the ring band and hopefully flow all the way down right there. Didn't quite go where I wanted it to, that's fine. It went uh, right in there, didn't go all the way down, but we're gonna go ahead and let this cool off and we'll go ahead and readjust it for the other soldering operation. Okay, this next soldering operation is gonna be this little loop band there. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some flux first. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry it out, and then I'll add my solder. Now, we're just going to add a little guy right there. Okay, so far so good. Next soldering I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little back here and then I will probably turn it around and re-solder a portion of that tongue area because uh, I see some solder areas that didn't quite flow into. So we'll go ahead and same thing as before, add some flux. Okay, same thing. All right, there we are, soldered, cleaned up. A Little bit of sanding left to do.